Hello, this presentation is a simple explanation of what a basic put option is. And we're going to refer to stock options here. So this is the basic put options explained. Now the dictionary defines the term option as a choice or an opportunity. But in the financial markets, option is actually an abbreviation of an options contract. An option is therefore a legally binding contract in this situation. So an option provides you the ability to purchase or sell a financial asset, as this is stock options, that would be for a number of shares, but not the obligation to purchase or sell that financial asset. What does that mean? Well, it means even though you have a contract to buy or sell an asset, you have the option, i.e. the choice, to only purchase or sell if the completion of that sale benefits you financially. So for put options, purchasing a put option on a stock gives you the buyer the option, but again not the obligation, to sell a set quantity of that stock at a set price until a set date. So if you look at an example, if you bought an XYZ $10 December the 24th put option, the contract would allow you the option to sell 100 XYZ shares because the, the standard contract size on the US market is 100 shares. The price that you could sell the shares at would be $10 a share and the expiry date would be December 24th, so you've got until the December 24th to actually sell those shares. So why would you purchase a put option? If you believe that a stock was going to go down in value and you wanted to profit from this move, you could buy a put option on that stock. Once the stock goes down, you can buy the stock at the new lower market price and then you can sell that same stock at the earlier higher price stated on your option. The put you purchase is a legally binding options contract. That means that whoever sold you the put option has to purchase the stock from you at that higher price. So I like to describe options in layman's terms. And I believe that the analogy of a house purchase provides a simplified explanation of how options work and how a put option works in this stage. So a stock option contract can usually cover 100 or more shares. But because we're going to simplify this down, in this example, the options contracts only refer to one house. So here we go, buying a put option on a house. We have a house that we are currently selling for $100,000. We think the house prices may fall, but we don't want to sell the house this month. We approach a prospective buyer with a contract proposal. Our contract states that we will pay the buyer $1,000 for the option, which is the right but not the obligation, remember, to sell that house at the list price of $100,000. The contract is valid for 30 days. If we don't sell the house within that period, the vendor will keep the $1,000 and there is no further commitment on either of our behalf. We have in fact purchased the equivalent of a one month put option on the property. So we get to decide whether we're going to exercise the put option or not. Remember, you decide whether or not you excise the option or let it expire worthless. Your choice depends on which gives you the most financial benefit. Exercising a contract refers to putting into effect the rights that were specified in the contract. So that means implementing the purchase or sale at a set price within the set time frame. So let's assume you decide to exercise the put option. The housing market crashes in the next 30 days and the house is now valued at $90,000. 
we can now exercise our put option and sell this house for $100,000. What does that mean for us in financial terms? Our sale price, we're selling the house for $100,000, minus the $1,000 we paid for the option, minus the $90,000, which is the current market value, leaves us with $9,000 locked in value. By purchasing the put option and exercise it, we spent $1,000 on the option, but we have still sold the house for $9,000 more than its current market value. Perhaps we're going to decide to let the contract expire. Why would you do that? Okay, so if the housing market soars in the next 30 days, and the house is now valued at $110,000. We let our option expire worthless and we sell the house at the market value of $110,000 in the open market. Remember, we had the right to sell at $100,000, but no contractual obligation. What does this mean for us in financial terms? So the current market value is $110,000. If we take away the $1,000 which we paid for our option, and then we take away $100,000 which was what the initial price that the house was listed for, it means we've made $9,000, that's our profit. By purchasing the put option, but letting the contract expire worthless. Although we spent $1,000 on an option which is now worthless, we have still sold the house for $9,000 more than we would have received a month ago. I do hope you've enjoyed that basic explanation of a put option. If you would like to find more free information, feel free to visit my Facebook page, which is Creating Clarity from Chaos on Facebook. Or you can follow me on Twitter at JEDQ, that's G-E-D-Q. Thanks for listening and I hope to give you more information soon.